that with technology, I wanted to talk about like connection and distraction and things like that. So yeah. you know, people to be happy want to feel connected. Yes. Technology can bring that connection through yeah. like, texting and social yeah. media and things like that. But does that constant exposure also affect our happiness? Well, this is a subject of tremendous interest among researchers, which is, does all this stuff add to happiness or not? And the answer is both. Um, it, like everything, I think, it just it amplifies human nature. It makes some things better and some things worse. If you're a person who, def who tends to suffer from social comparison, Facebook is going to make that way easier for you to indulge in that because you could spend your entire day doing social comparison. Um, and, uh, but then for some people, it's an amazing tool. I had a friend who was a, uh, like had this job where she, I mean, how do you even, what is, what was her job? She would go to places of extreme, like, like that were in the like state department, like watch list. Like, do not go to this place. It's inc incredibly dangerous. And like, we, yeah, you know, you're on your own because we were too scared of it. She would go there and do humanitarian work. So she was moving constantly to all these places. And she said it was, and this was before, so this was years ago, and she said it was really hard to keep in touch with people because she was moving so much to all these places that were out of the way. And so she just fell out of touch. And it took so much effort just to know somebody's address, whereas now all that stuff is effortless. So, so a lot of things um, are much, much easier. And, um, and one of the things that's definitely true in habits is that anything that's convenient, we're more, much more likely to do it. And every little bit of convenience matters. For instance, they did this hilarious study about tongs and salad bars. It turns out that if people use tongs on salad bars, they will take less food than if there are big spoons, because it's just that much more work to use a tong than a spoon, and people cannot be bothered. The, the same thing, they did a thing with uh, like an ice cream, what do you call it, like those ice cream cases? If the lid, when the lid was open, people took much more ice cream than if the lid, when, that when the lid was shut, even if the lid was perfectly transparent, you could see right through it to the ice cream. So it wasn't like, oh, I can't see the ice cream, so I don't want it. It's like, you could see the ice cream right there. But people couldn't be bothered to open the thing. So anyway, so we're incredibly, we're incredibly sensitive to, to convenience. And so, so this is one of the things that makes it very convenient. And along the same lines, if you are feeling overwhelmed by it, if you feel like you're having trouble turning it off, one of the things you can do is make it less convenient. So if you're always checking something on your phone, delete it from your phone and only check from your desktop, or vice versa. Or um, you, you can use the, the apps like Freedom that will shut down certain sites so that you can't access them. Um, if you have trouble with online shopping, uh, delete all your accounts and so that every time you shop, you have to shop as a visitor because it is so such a nuisance to enter that information every time that you will often drop out. Um, and not as rewarding. Yeah, it's not as You're not going to get points or whatever. Right, right. right. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay, but here's a weird thing because I love hearing about people's patterns. Many people were saying to me that a thing that they did for fun was that they would shop and they would fill their cart just for fun and sort of have fun picking things out. And then they would just abandon their cart because they had no intention of buying it. It was just like, it's a, it's a, it was like a form of, of just, the fun was picking it. And I thought, that is so interesting. And then I recently read an article saying this is a huge thing that these, these retail outlets are trying to figure out, which is so many people drop out. But I'm like, they're deliberately dropping out. It's not that your site is forcing them out. It's that they never intended to purchase. It's just a, it's just sort of a window, digital it's, window it's, shopping. It's digital window shopping. It's so interesting. So again, it's like, understand how it's working for you. If you can do it and that's fun, okay, fine. If you find that you're buying too much, okay, figure out another way to, I know a woman who said that she did a thing where she could only check her, her uh, phone while she was doing squats. So there's like, you're either going to get in incredibly good shape or you're going to put your phone down. Another person said that she had a rule that her children could be on their devices when she was on her device. So her children would run around the house like holding out her iPad to her, temptingly, being like, mommy, 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 don't you want to check your email? Um, because then they could use their devices. So then she didn't. Um, so there's a lot, once you recognize, like, this is not good for me. Like my sister with Candy Crush, like she was like, I love it, but I can't manage it. So I need to shut it off. And here's another thing. This is true of technology. It's also true of food. And it's true of strong temptation. So in my book about habits, I talk about the 21 habits we can use to make or break our habits. So one is the strategy of convenience and inconvenience. That's what we talked about. Um, and this is the strategy of abstaining. 
in our culture, we have a, we generally have a model of moderation, that this is the right thing. You should be able to indulge a little bit, have a cheat day, have a little bit, play Candy Crush on the train, you know, like moderation is good. It's not good to be too strict. It's not good to say that certain, certain things are off limits. But what I've, in my observation, I'm definitely like this myself, and there are many, many people like me, for some people, moderation is too hard. It's easier to have none. As an abstainer, I can have none or I can have a lot. I can't have a little. I can't have half a dish of ice cream. Um, and if you are having trouble doing something in moderation, it sounds very demanding to have let none, but you might find it easier to have none. Um, I know a guy who said that World of Warcraft cost him an extra year on his PhD thesis. If you can't play it a little bit, maybe try giving it up altogether. Again, it sounds very hard, but for certain people, abstainers, that is much easier to manage. Now, moderators are people who, like, they get kind of panicky if they're told they can never do something or uh, that they're not, that something's off limits. So they're the people, and I don't know if there are any of you here tonight, who keep one square of, you know, one bar of fine chocolate in their desk drawer, and then every day or two you have one little square, and that's all that they want is the one square of chocolate. And, you know, and then they're trying to get everybody to do this. And it's like, I can't have one square of chocolate. You know, the, my whole day would be preoccupied with one square, two squares, three squares. Same thing with Elizabeth with the Candy Crush. It was like, once the app was on her phone, she just couldn't manage it. Um, so, and so it's, it was something like an app, it's easy. You just delete it. Then it's, then it's, it's, it's just out. Um, and so, but, so this is a thing to think about for yourself. If it's hard to have a little try having none, because you might actually find that easier. And, this, and with technology, too. Um, I have a friend who, who produces TV. He loves TV, loves TV. But he doesn't have it at home. And I was like, why not? And he's like, I sell it on the street. I don't use it at home. I can't, I can't take it. Um, because he can't have a little bit of TV. He loves it so much. So do you think that our devices overall end up distracting us from happiness? I just think it's it sort of, a, it, it just depends. It depends. In some ways, it's good. In some ways, it's not good. It depends on how you're using it, what you're using it for. I don't, I don't think, I, I, I think they're just a tool. Yeah. I think each one of us has to take, to really reflect on its value in our own life. Um, you know, and it's also like, well, if you're using it as a Kindle, you're using your Kindle on your iPad, is like, that's really reading a book. You know what I mean? So part of it is like, what are you even doing? What I love is when people pretend like they're not watching TV. I'm like, well, you can call it whatever you want, but you know what I mean when I say watching TV. Like the fact that it's on your phone. On your yeah, I know, right? Like yeah. if you're watching, you know, Game of Thrones, like let's just call that watching TV no matter how you're beaming it into your eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>